it started. Hi, we're back with the, the shit. Yeah. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up? Oh, hi, Olivia. Oh, hey, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't see you there. <laughs> yeah. Um, not a whole lot happened this week, but we're here with some stuff. There's some cool stuff that... Cool stuff, but then not cool stuff. Um, like this person. Yeah, we'll be going to get once again with the NFL. Um, last week we just talked about Ray Rice because that's all we knew about. Now there's uh, Adrian Peterson who got arrested for child abuse. Um, or yeah, has been arrested. He's pretty arrested? much in custody. In custody so, yeah. for child abuse. And yeah. Greg Hardy got deactivated from the Panthers for domestic assault. And uh, John Dwyer from the Cardinals got um, deactivated and all this stuff for domestic assault and child abuse too. Yeah. Um, so... Does the NFL have a problem? Uh, kind of like uh, we said earlier, like um, not that one that they've had that it's, it's not yeah. sprung up out of nowhere. Yeah, there's no way that sprung up out of nowhere. Cause like, I mean, you, you put it very well. I mean, yeah, so you said. there's no way this this sprung up out of nowhere. I think this has been going on for a long time. <laughs> I mean, probably as long as the NFL's been around. But with all the recent. Uh, media frenzy over Ray Rice and now Adrian Peterson and the whole tape coming out and all that and just all the things that Goodell has been doing and now his just absolute disappearance like no one has talked to Roger Goodell in I don't know how long like a week or so no one has heard from him either. Yeah, yeah. So. he hasn't done anything it's been nothing but radio silence from Roger Goodell. I think someone in the NFL as an organization is t whispering in teams' ears saying, you know, just don't, let don't, don't yeah, yeah, don't this slide, don't try to hide this, just be outright with it, because there's already enough of a feeding frenzy over this in the media. Well, sponsors are already thinking, to, you know, they're already getting really concerned. About but I don't think they're going to, the NFL's not going to lose sponsors. No, the I NFL's mean, is too big. It, it, if someone it leaves, be someone else is just going to fill that spot. Yeah, yeah, but but they're still, they came out, someone like Anheuser-Busch came out and was like, we're really concerned about this. Yeah. I think, you know, it, I don't know if this was a problem. You know, I don't know if this has always been a problem. I think it's more of a coincidence thing. Like, oh, all these things are happening and it's all happening at once. Um, I think more of the problem is, is just how it's being handled. I think Roger Goodell and the NFL is waiting for, you know, if the law is going to do it. You see if they're forced something. to do something. Um, they're waiting around for that. And, and then they'll be like, oh, he actually did this. This is your punishment. Um, but at the same time, Goodell's been so... About everything. Well, yeah. Well, that's the problem with the NFL. They they they're reactive. They're not yeah. proactive. Sam, are you gonna speak? Um, yeah. Uh, well, actually, this problem has been going on forever, and we have guys like now, like Adrian Peterson, probably the biggest name. Ray Rice, maybe a little bit, but you've always had Ben Roethlisberger, Chris Henry, Pac-Man Jones, uh, Plaxico Burris. All these incidents that have been happening since Roger Goodell came into office, and one thing that he actually did that he didn't really screw up, he, he's still kind of late on it a little bit, but he actually punished uh, athletes under the uh, conduct detrimental to the league policy, whatever. He was basically the new sheriff in town and he took care of a lot of problems. And a lot of people criticized him for that because a lot of his punishments were inconsistent or they were just too much. But uh, it's kind of ironic that people now are calling for, you know, harsher punishments when before he gave harsh punishments and it was, you know, like with the bounty um, scandal in New Orleans, a lot of punishments were not handed out too evenly. Some players that, they signed a thing, uh, like 20 players signed this thing, said that they didn't really have, they didn't have anything to do with it. They didn't involve themselves in it, but they still got, a number of them got, um, I think at least Scott Fujita got uh, suspended because, you know, they knew about it nonetheless. So, and people were criticizing Roger Gale for that when they still had knowledge of it, but 
they just didn't do anything. And their, their whole excuse was, oh, well, we didn't have anything to do with it, but you still knew about it, so you still should have said something. But, um... But isn't that kind of what Roger Dell <laughs> did with the whole Ray Rice tape? He knew about it, because he had to have known about it, if the whole thing about the, the police sending it to the uh, NFL months ago Not necessarily. Because he's, he's the commissioner of the NFL. It's not just... You don't that, think, it's got to go through channels, but I mean... But you don't think he didn't at least have some idea of what was going on? <laughs> he is the guy. He there. is the guy. You don't think the president knows sort of what's going on in, the, in Congress or in the House or anything like no, that? Not with everything. I mean, the president... I mean, a good majority of everything. everything. Like, there there are man. channels that things have to kind of travel through. It's like, yeah. But something big like that. I mean, if, I mean, if, if he didn't know, he didn't know. But I mean, no. I, 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 I share <laughs> your beliefs that... He most likely knew, but I but I can see that maybe there is the possibility that it went under the radar. Somehow. There's there's a if there if that did happen, that's a very very tiny possibility that just occurred. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, a I monumental mean, communication. He's a busy problem. guy. He controls the whole but, NFL, and they have departments to handle that stuff. And he doesn't like not everything goes through him. It has to come up to him. But it's the NFL, and the NFL is one of the largest businesses in the world. Exactly, and large. Yeah, but people. you don't think they could be like, hey, we need this video. And they'll be like, okay. Well, that's the thing. If they went and they like, got the video... I just don't believe that he didn't, he wasn't aware. If anyone yeah. found out, he was aware of it. They knew the casino. How did they knew the police? How did they asked the police for it? Because that's the thing people criticize him for. If It's either he had to take a shot and either like, he either doesn't... He either respects the law and doesn't get the tape and asks for it, it goes through procedures and doesn't get it, or he gets it and that could just completely, you know, it's evidence in Ray Rice's trial and it's illegal to have that. So it's either you face legal problems or, you know, which he did, he did botch. But I'm, not, I'm not covering for him, he did botch the punishment of Ray Rice, but you either have to go to legal trouble or, you know, just not yeah. have it. Oh, uh, this whole thing could just be an entire debate in and of itself. Oh, yeah. I, I think, um, I just think the problem is, yeah, inconsistent punishments, like Sam said, and just the way they're handling it, I feel. There seems to be a lack and, of communication. And, and it does suck that the NFL is so reactive. Like, it, it takes something like this to happen before they, they like, change their domestic assault policy or something, you know what I mean? Like, or, or, why wasn't or it takes all place? these, you know people getting suspended for drugs to change their drug policy and stuff like that. It just, it sucks that they won't come out and be like, okay, times are changing, you know, we, we really got to change this or something. Yeah. It, it takes something to happen. Yeah. yeah but. Yeah, it's a very I reactionary mean, thing. Specifically in the case of Adrian Peterson, and at least some of the guys who have been doing stuff, Ray McDonald, Greg Hardy, um, actually Greg Hardy and Adrian Peterson, they're not like, suspended or anything, yeah, they yeah. agreed to take a leave of absence. So yeah. it's not even like the team deactivated them. They came to an agreement where the players had a bit of leverage to say that, oh, we'll just we'll just leave and still collect our entire year's worth of pay. So what you're left with is something that I feel like the magnitude of it really needs to be clear with people and need to understand it, is that, you know, aside of the NFL, Roger Goodell is basically owned by the owners, they're his bosses, all 32, but especially with these teams, the owners of these teams control a lot of people, they oversee a lot of people, and the, even the people below them, that are still pretty far up in the chain, really cannot do their jobs that well, and Roger Goodell is like Bin Laden now, I mean you can't find him anywhere, because of, you know, it's just basically a publicity, well, not publicity thing, is his public image. Sort of, he, he's just taking time off, and he's really being involved in this investigation into the Ray Rice tape. But, um, especially with, uh, I mean, Ray McDonald needs to be suspended, Greg Hardy needs to be suspended. Greg Hardy was found guilty um, of picking his girlfriend up over his head and throwing her onto a couch covered in assault rifles and threatening <laughs> to kill her. Yeah, and he needs to be suspended for that. Ray McDonald. Yeah. A really big guy versus not even not even a woman. That's the whole case about this violence against women. How about violence against people that are just weaker or violence in general? Yeah. And um, just beating the crap out of someone weaker than him. And um, 
with the, with the case of Ray Rice, it is more debatable, and it is an issue that people need to come and face, but um, I would say Ray, uh, Adrian Peterson is the one that is, at the, at the same time, the most shocking, mm -hmm. but at the same time, the most debatable, having sides of that, but it's an issue that needs to be addressed in the NFL, I'm not sure why, why it hasn't been, and why, um, you know, uh, the there aren't anger management courses that are required for NFL players to take. I mean, the NBA never has any of these problems. I mean, you know, no, uh, other, Malice yeah, the, no other sport has. These Malice in the Palace happened forever ago, like ten years ago, and you know, NBA players are they're entirely too goofy, and you know, there aren't strict marijuana rules. They go home after a game and they, you know, smoke weed and they joke around with each other, and the NFL is just. Uh, I don't know, the, Roger Goodell really needs to come back and enforce stronger punishments and really be the sheriff in town again. You know, because what he's doing now, it, it's a beginning at redemption. It's not, uh, doesn't fix his image at all, but, uh, you know, John, John Dwyer, he needs to lose his job. Uh, Ray McDonald needs to lose his job. Adrian Peterson, it, the sad thing is, because he's such a good player, he'll be back. Um, and just the last thing about Ray Rice, I think he should win his appeal over the, the second suspension because it was illegal for the NFL to do that just because they messed up the first time. They can't come out and say, you know, the video was new evidence because the video was part of the police report. It was, What happened in the video was detailed in the police report. So, you know, video wasn't new evidence. Yeah, they haven't seen the video, but what happened in the video was in the report. So they messed up the first time. They can't come back and, uh, you know. Double check me. Yeah. So, Ray Rice Lawless. should win his appeal, and I don't know if any team will sign him. He has a lot to work on personally, yeah, but... Be plenty to get out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's only 27, so he could be back by the time he's 30. I mean, Michael Vick... As you say, I was literally about to say, Michael Vick, you know. Yeah. But it, what he did was, like, fights. twice as disgusting in People my love opinion. dogs, but it wasn't, it wasn't the fact... Vick wasn't arrested for, specific for the dog fights. It was the gambling <clears> associated with the dog fighting. But so, dog fighting has, has, really has a certain for. social yeah. thing about it. You know, you you could uh, if somebody's like, oh, you you know, so you look at a you mean you break yeah. that apart. You look at a gambler and a dog fighter. Who you more yeah, I'm not saying I'm not condoning. It. I'm just saying like what he really was arrested for was the gambling associated with it. But all we knew about was the dog fighting that pissed everybody off. Yeah. So and look, and he's got a job, or at least he did. I mean, no, he's still yeah, playing. Yeah, he still for, does. He's playing for the Jets. It's yeah. just what Ray Rice has to do is what Michael Vick had to do is earn his job back through a lot of. A lot of hard work. Yeah, I, I yeah. still don't. I don't still. I still don't forgive the crime that Michael Vick committed. Oh, yeah. no. uh, committed, but, but I, you can forgive the person. Michael Vick. He's become more of like a, I guess, a mentor as well. He's become a better person mm -hmm. and, and to raise yeah. awareness to the issues and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, it's right. Evolution. Evolution. I, don't I, don't know, right. I never hear about it in the news. You know, Michael Vick raising awareness. Well, I mean, that's that's a, at that point, that's kind of old news. Like you heard about it when it was first happening. Now it's like, oh, he just does that. I think it's kind of mostly blown over now, so he doesn't have to do as much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still think, you know, kind of cynical, but but he went he went through and made that effort to become a better you know human being. Yeah, which Ray Rice has to do. Then you can probably play in the league again, hopefully. Yeah. For his sake, I mean, I hope the best for him. You know, uh, the last thing I'll say about all of it, I guess, is that um, you know, the, it really is reflective of the public when something comes out, such as the Ray Rice case, where. The public just goes head hunting instead of uh, how can we confront this issue and make it better? You know, let's replace Donald Sterling. Let's replace Roger Goodell. It's, you know, Ray Rice deserves to lose his job, but you know, you need to confront the issues and not just do this the public public uh, treat treat the problem, not the symptoms. Yeah, this public sort of cover up because people are come complaining about uh, an NFL cover up. People need to address things and not just cover it up and. You know, get this guy out, move this guy in, and that doesn't fix racism, racism in the NBA or violence in the NFL. But you know, hope the best for the people and hope that they uh, can learn that they're fucking stupid. <laughs> so, what a great thing! Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's all I have to say about it. All right. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot more, but uh, for the sake of time, I guess. Developing. It's developing yeah. stories. There'll be more on this definitely. Probably. Yeah. Roger Goodell needs to make a return though. <laughs>
Seriously, show up. No, for the sake of his this, this whole him not being around it just doesn't look good. I mean, he might might be for a good reason. It just doesn't look. Good. And one other, one other thing about the Adrian Peterson case is the thing that's really messed up is that Adrian Peterson has one four. He has like seven kids with seven different women. Or he's not even yeah. saying how many kids he has. He's just he fucks anything. Uh, but you know, the one kid had lacerations on his legs, his yeah. ass, his scrotum, and his hand, the palm of his hand. So you know, he's putting his hands up in. In defense, yeah, so that, that just yeah. makes it a yeah. lot worse. Uh, yeah. So it's a pretty fucked up situation. Make some happier times. Um, yeah. Happier times. Let's some video games. Microsoft has officially bought Mojang Studios for $2.5 billion. I mean, Whew, Microsoft notch. now owns Minecraft. And, well, not, well, I guess Notch will get the money, but he's not. If, he, Notch wants nothing to do with this. Notch said that yeah. he did not. He wanted to do other things, but he kept getting pulled to Minecraft, and he did not enjoy it anymore. Yeah, okay. because, I mean, Minecraft was is one of the highest selling games. He didn't games. I mean, want this game to be... He wanted it to be a small PC yeah. game, and maybe go to the Xbox, but then people started wanting it so yeah. much, it's like... But, I mean, Minecraft he, was never supposed to be this big. It just happened by a, a happy coincidence. He fully deserves the money, and he definitely earned it, but I just hope Microsoft doesn't yeah. go and fuck it up. I think that the fucking letter that Notch wrote was really kind of sad because at the end he said this is this is not about the money it's about the sanity yeah and I was like man that kind of sucks um, yeah. but it does yeah and it does make sense a lot of people were going on about I mean uh, about why Microsoft would buy Mojang like why would they do it in the first place I, th I think it's more for the other things that Mojang could do besides Minecraft I mean yeah. maybe with with besides when Mojang was like an independent you know, they, they just worked on Minecraft because that's all they kind of knew and that's all they really had to. Whereas, now they have Microsoft breathing down their neck. They might be like, hey, yeah, yeah, that Minecraft thing's working out. Why don't you make something else so we can make more money? Yeah. You know. That's, that's not what Microsoft does, though. No. That's, that's not what they do. Yeah, well. That did, they didn't let Bungie make anything new. Lionhead never made anything new. All right, true. I mean, Three four three is never going to make anything. But I mean, Halo. like, but I mean, like, in, uh, except for like skin packs and maybe, uh, what's the the change in the layout of like a Minecraft world, wherever yeah. those are the themes or whatever. The, the Minecraft themes. Then I mean, once somebody buys Minecraft, you're not making any more money off of that because there's no DLC or anything. It's twenty bucks and it's done. So I mean, it's not like you know Fable where it's like, hey, they put out like or, or whatever game like Halo, they put out a bunch of DLC each time, you know. Yeah. People will buy, and also Minecraft's kind of more of a niche game. Not everybody's gonna like it, so I think they'll like. Not yeah. everybody yet. Fifty-four million. Fifty-four copies million. have been sold. Fifty-four million copies, but I mean, it's still it's not for everybody. I mean, yeah, it's a very well successful game, but it's like you're not the number of new people joining Minecraft is but getting a also, lot less. Look at what is it? How many? Did you just say forty-five, fifty, fifty-five, fifty-four million, compared to the five hundred million that. Destiny sold or whatever. But that's four million copies. 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 Destiny Co sold this five hundred million dollars. Oh, five hundred million sold five million copies. Five million. Like, because yeah. I mean, it's like it's like hundred dollars. Oh, that's copies, true. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred dollars uh, per copy. What? Well, sixty dollars per copy. $60. But I mean, somebody got limited edition. But yeah. like, it yeah. it, it, it kind of evens about it. I guess. Yeah. And that was only to retailers too. They sold three hundred twenty-five million to consumers. Which isn't that bad. I mean, that's still yeah, that's still that's IP, it's not bad. I honestly thought it was going to sell a lot. That's just me, though. I think I. Microsoft would fuck this up by making an exclusive to Xbox and PC and Windows phones. That's where they would fuck this up. They need to let it be how it is now. I think they're they're, they're going to make a fuckload of money even off of the PlayStation versions. They they can make so much off of the toys. They the there's a the Minecraft list. movie that's being made. I, I heard an idea someone said today they could make like a Minecraft cartoon. Imagine how yeah. fucking much that would make. Like, 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 like look they're, at all the They're going to be rolling in dough. Look at all the systems. It's, I mean, both Xboxes, both yeah. Playstations, the Vita. It'll probably go to Windows Phone now that Microsoft has it. It's on the Apple Store. It's you on Android. You can get it on like iPad and, and stuff like it's that. It's in the Android Store. Yeah, or Apple or Google Android Play. Store. Or Google Play. Or the Play yeah. Store. Yeah. It's in the Android Marketplace. You know, there's so much that they could do. And I mean, heck, um, what else is Microsoft dabbling into? Heck. I mean, heck, I gotta think. <laughs> heck, man. All right, uh -huh.
But yeah, there's so much room for expansion. Yeah. yeah. It'd be dumb for them to just say, nope, no more for anything else. Yeah. They're expecting to get all that $2.5 billion back by the end of the fiscal year. You know, I can say they probably will. They probably will. <laughs> I think so. Um, but at the same time, is Minecraft going to continue to stay relevant? It, it'll, st years years? it'll stay relevant as long as people play it. But it, it's going to be like a, gonna like be a plateau. Yeah, Eventually, gonna plateau there's going to be less and less people buying Minecraft. Like, even like now, there's less and less people buying Minecraft. I mean, there's still probably a lot of people going out and buying Minecraft, but it'll eventually it'll plateau out. It'll be yeah, like, there's probably still a lot of people a couple buying it. But, oh, yeah. yeah, a lot. It's, it, it's still very much I mean, Minecraft will probably be the best selling game when it's all said and done on the PS4 and Xbox One. Probably. Out there. Um, yeah, Tetsuya Nomura is no longer directing Final Fantasy XV. Um, a demo of Final Fantasy XV is coming in early 2015. If you buy Final Fantasy Type O HD, you get the demo for free, which makes me think, are they selling the demo? Which is really fucked up. But Final Fantasy Type O comes out on the PS4 and the Xbox One on March 17th. I haven't even heard about this game. So. Type O it's was originally... It's, uh, it's a PSP game that was only released in Japan. Now it's coming okay. through the PS4. I saw some gameplay of it. It's kind of like a hack and slash, more action oriented, like Final Fantasy XV. So that cool. makes sense. I think this is fucking huge. Mostly the demo because that Ra means Radio Final Fantasy Suns. XV is happening. Like it's going to be a real it, it, thing. Yeah. Final Fantasy XV or Versus Thirteen has has for the long time, and though a lot of these games have come out, but it had been for a long time the games that people were like, "This game's never going to come out." You know, like Half Life Three. Duke Nukem Forever, Diablo Three, and now, now I know two of those three games I just mentioned have come out. But like Duke but Nukem only, Forever, but only one of them was actually good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Duke Nukem Forever took fifteen years. Diablo took what? It was like almost. Oh, again, almost fifteen years. I want to um, say. Diablo. It was at least ten. Yeah. Diablo, Diablo was, Two came out in ninety nine, I think. Or maybe no, Diablo was, came out in ninety nine. Ninety nine. Okay. So it might be over ten years then, at least. But like, like yeah. It's finally happening. Same thing with Kingdom Hearts 3. You know, there's news about that. You yeah, Tetsuya Namir is now fully directing Kingdom Hearts 3. So that means that's in full-scale that that's, that's the that's thing. Real. That's the thing that made me literally jump for joy. I read this when I got off last night. And yeah. It was like, when, you t when you sent the article, like, I said, oh, Final Fantasy 15. It was so cool. late. It was like 12.30. And I saw Kingdom Hearts 3. So, <gasps> it was like 12.30. I, like, I didn't fall asleep. I'm just like... <laughs> it's actually happening. But then at the same time, I'm like, Tetsuya Nomura has been directing a game for almost a decade. Fuck. <laughs> That's not a good thing. Like, it's... it's. <laughs> I think I, Kingdom Hearts 3 is actually going to happen. I think it's going to happen. I mean, but, the, uh, yeah. I don't think... I don't... But that game is... Versus 13 was kind of one of those weird games that he's like, yeah, this is going to come out, but like, it was a game that... It wasn't the game like you know everybody wanted. It's like it's a game yeah. that people are like yeah I'd buy that and it looks cool. But it's not like Kingdom Hearts three. People want that. If he doesn't own up to his announcement from almost a year and a half ago, he uh, he might get well, lynched. I, I yeah. almost had a tear of joy it's, running it's down my face. I was so happy. Um, I said, I told I, you. But yeah. I think both of these games. They also released a trailer for Final Fantasy XV. It's like uh, the cinematics are like I haven't watched it yet. It, it looks I really strange. It's them on a car ride, and then there's a bunch of like actual gameplay. So it's kind of cool looking. Um, whatever. All aboard the hype train. I know. It's pretty true, true. This supports my theory that I have right now, or not my my hunch because I forgot theories multiple hunches. That the only time you're going to hear about either of those games, Kingdom Hearts Three or Final Fantasy XV, until there's actual gameplay or a demo or something released, you're only going to hear about it at the Japanese Expo and or E3, and that's it. You're not going to hear anything else any other time. So, which I, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with. They're happening, I just... I, I, I feel Final Fantasy XV is an early 2016 game. I can see maybe... And, maybe um, like, if, it's de if the demo is out... The demo... If the demo is going to be yeah. out... By March, I mean, who knows? Might I could see it being fall, holiday 2015. Fall, holiday 2015, maybe. Maybe, I but I just feel like they'll want to avoid a very crowded holiday that's going to be 2015. True. Just to have the light on them. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe it'll... Kingdom Hearts 3, 2017. I'm calling it that. 
Yeah, 15 year anniversary, it's too much of a coincidence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just upset I would have to wait until 2017 to get this game. Yeah, no, it makes me really sad. I know. I don't care. Whatever. I'll Tears. still buy it. Awesome. Tears. Uh, Bloodborne's going to be releasing February 6th. Everywhere? PS4. Everywhere. Everywhere, okay. Everywhere. I, I know yeah. there's some so, about that. So. Two PS4 exclusives in two weeks. Two pretty big exclusives. Oh, Bloodborne's Bloodborne. going to be a lot bigger of a deal than I think people are making out to be right now. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm slowly huge. getting more and more interested in that game. Because Dark Souls is fucking huge, and Dark Souls also sells well in Japan, so that means there's going to be a huge so seller for Japan. There's going to be a huge PS4 seller in Japan. Oh, yeah, it's it's going to be a huge deal. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. That means February's packed. Bloodborne, February 6th. Evolve, February 10th. The Order, um, 1886, February 20th. And The Witcher 3, February 24th. Goddamn. <sighs> it's going to be a very packed winter. Everything has to be, be very packed. packed it's like going to shows. Shows are always within two weeks of each other. Yeah. Um, WWE 2K15, I mean, I don't really play this game. But I only find this significant. On PS4 and Xbox One, it got pushed back to November 18th. I saw that. Literally everything is coming out November 18th. <laughs> yeah, everything. And, and Super Smash Brothers on Wii U is rumored for November 21st. So I'm going to put this in perspective really quick. That week of the 18th to the 21st, you have um, WWE 2K15 on the new generation. Far Cry 4. Far Cry 4, Dragon Age Inquisition. Shadow of Mordor on PS3 360, Little Big Planet 3, um, Grand Theft Auto 5 on new gen systems, um, and then on the 20, Music Week 4, and then on the 21st, you might have Super Smash Brothers on Wii U, and then you have Pokemon on the 3DS. Fucking Christ. I'm gonna be, my wallet. That is absolutely fucking ridiculous. My wallet's crying. My wallet's gonna hemorrhage that week. Sam, what are you buying that week? Um, you can buy Pokemon. You buy, buy Pokemon. And then you should get Shadow of Mordor because I don't have know. a new. No, you can get it. That, that's when it's available for PS3 and 360. Uh, yeah. So now you have no excuse. Fucking buy it. Mordor, I'll be able to pick up this month. So yeah. That's a Christmas game to me. What? I'm going to Shadow of Mordor. Yeah, maybe. That's a nice shiny game to wake up to on Christmas in my life. <laughs> um, Hideo Kojima fully confirmed that Metal Gear Solid Five is releasing in 2015. Yeah. Just cool. add that to the huge list of. Games. Did you hear that's that? going to be one of the greatest gaming years of all time. Do you have, do you have the other Metal Gear news? On the there? Metal Gear Collection? Yeah. That's a clothing line. It's a clothing line. It's not an yeah, actual game. I got, I got sad about that. Dumb. Yeah. Also, finally, that I can think of, besides so small things, Final Fantasy Explorers is coming to 3DS. It's like uh, Final Fantasy meets Mine. Four player co op. So, yeah, moving on to music. Sam, are you stoked for this? Ghost of the Side, Dear Youth, new album, November 17th. Oh, maybe. You hear the new songs? Yeah. Both of them? Um, just the one. Um, first one, the Avalanche. It was one I feel like bad. they've written these songs before, though. Well, that's, that's the case with, like, everything. <laughs> the songs are pretty good. They, they were good, though. I, so, that's kind of cool. Um, Carcass putting out a new EP of, like, bonus songs from um, Surgical Steel. That comes out of November 11th. So that's Stick to your guns. Put it on new. I'm not sure you pretty cool. Yeah. February 10th, 2015. Stick to your guns. This would be the end Machine Head cancels their, right canceled back. their tour. Okay, yeah, Machine Head canceled their tour with Children of Bone, Mephica, and Battle Cross. Ah. It's made me super sad because I already had a fucking ticket to it. To Good the, thing I didn't buy my guy. To the ticket. film again. Why did they cancel it? They, they cited, no, their, their new album, which comes out November 10th, um, they said it's taking longer than expected to finish it, and they're supposed to start the tour in like two weeks. Uh, so they canceled it. They're, well, they said postponed uh, to early 2015. All right, I mean, so hopefully it's the same lineup. Yeah. I don't really care. I just want my fucking money back. Yeah. I think, you know, that, that so, works for me because, cause, <laughs> cause, like, yeah, I'm going, I don't want her to have to. Spend money on my vacation. It just means less shows I have to go to, which sucks. But then it's also more money for me. I was just stoked because it was it was the film again, man. It was Machine Head, Children of Bodom, Black Diamond, yeah. Murder, Suicide, Silence, Epica, and Battlecross. Like, that's a great. That's a great fucking. I was fucking mind. stoked on that. Oh well, I guess I'll go see Periphery that day. <laughs> Periphery and <laughs> Intervals. Intervals. 
squishes. Um, ready for the most bro tour? Here we go. Uh, Black oh. Label Society, Hate Breed, and Butcher Babies. Tour. Yeah. Fuck right, I kind of want to see Black Label Society just for to see Zach Wild, but remember when we saw Hate Breed with Tanner? Yeah. They, they were loud. They were <laughs> really loud. Um, down, Orange Goblin, Blast, and King Parrot is touring. You go see Down. I would love to see Down just to be like I saw Phil and Salmo in person live, but I know he would sound like the horse shit. Yeah, I wouldn't want to waste the money. So <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it was free, which things we gave him to you? I don't know, probably still sound like shit. I was, say, I was expecting your response to be, but then I'd be wasting gas money. Well, yeah, <laughs> still, either way, it's a waste unless it's like he comes to me. It's like, can't yeah. fucking do this here, you said. <laughs> um, that's all I have for music. Deadpool movie comes out February 12th. We just found that out. That's a uh, Valentine's weekend. That's, so see, uh, see, that's, take, that's, that's so take your sweetie and go see De Deadpool. <laughs> go see The Merc with the Mouth. That's weird though. Like, is that like, that's February 12th next year. 2016. 20, oh, 2016. I was going to say, if it's next year, I'm like, think, that, that, that movie's been in development hell since X-Men yeah. Origins Wolverine. You're going to tell me that's coming out in six, not even six months? Yeah. Alright, so, 2016. It makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I also read that the Assassin's Creed movie got pushed back. I don't even, that was supposed to come out in 2015. I didn't really think Robert Downey Jr. Movie. is Da Vinci. That's all I have to say. Rumor. Rumor. You know what? Be, just just, I let, could me see just yeah, let me be happy. <laughs> I could see it. I could definitely see it as Da Vinci. I, I think that's, that's, that too. I think that's about it, isn't it? I don't think in the Assassin's Creed movie that it should follow any of the games. So, oh, I was yeah. thinking about that today. I'm like, carve your own path. Because if they follow the game, fast. then people are going to be really nitpicky. Like, oh, Ezio's wiener wasn't big enough. Or, he didn't fuck enough chicks, you know? Ezio His sister's boobs so. weren't big enough, you know? Some, like, stupid, stupid shit. Or story yeah. plot things, you know? Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of, like, a, a extra lore, lore that they, that they can go to. Like that uh, Nikolai Orlov or whatever. What do you think they've done a game? But, I mean, or, or, I don't know if they've done a game, maybe. One of the side games. Maybe. If they picked a game to go after, I would say Assassin's Creed 4. Black Flag? That'd be pretty, That'd be pretty cool. dope. It'd be a ripoff of Pirates of the Caribbean. But fuck it, right? Cool. Do, yeah. um, if, if they, I'd say if they wanted to rip off one, do uh, three, except, you know, make it kind of better. <laughs> yeah. Better. I don't know, I think one of the Ezio movies, like, if they did, like, something from the Ezio trilogy, that would be pretty cool. Or maybe, or maybe, what if they did another story of Ezio, just not based or, um, on a movie? I mean, based on a game. There's the one Asian assassin that Ezio trained before yeah. he died. Yeah, so you could do something like that. There's all kinds of possible. Frank? Yeah, Frank. No, it was actually a chick. Yeah. Frank Etta? Frank Etta. <laughs> For Francine. For Francine, that's what it was. Really yeah. Is that it? Her name is Frank Etta. I don't know, I just pulled a name out of my ass. It's uh, halfway female. One clan finally beat that fucking Destiny raid, and they died almost 2,000 times. 1,605 times they died. We'll, we'll talk about that yeah, later. Yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about Destiny raid. <laughs> At least not yet. I'm not worried about doing this raid anytime soon. Honestly. No. Yeah. But, it's all right, the breakdowns. Cool. It's all the breakdowns for the week. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe. Fucking gets his hair all over. I didn't even touch.